Welcome back to Life on Rehearse. Yes, we're talking about dressing up. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and author of Someone Died, Now What? Now, Corey, before we get started, we have to do a very important shout out to a mutual friend of ours, Isabel Kahn. She is organizing a wonderful walk. It's called the Mental Health and Suicide Awareness Walk Montreal. It's going to be held on Saturday, September 11th at 1 p.m. at Mount Royal. So if you need a little bit more information about this important walk, um, they have a Facebook page. It's under the same name. So just look it up under Mental Health and Suicide Awareness Walk in Montreal. Um, And Isabel's just doing a fantastic job bringing awareness to this and helping out a lot of people. Um, so, Corey, I've been looking forward to this because um, you caught me a little bit off guard with this this term cosplay. Yeah, I, I did. You did. We did. You know, we, we, Matt and I are often wondering what topics to use. And, of course, my daughter, who has been a tremendous help with coming up with some of the ideas around Life Unrehearsed Issues, says to me, why don't you interview uh, an, an old friend of mine, Aileen? She's a cosplayer. And I'm like, uh, a what? So I'm, she starts to explain it to me. And I say, Matt, let's. we should interview someone who does cosplay and he says <laughs> basically what until i start what? talking to my kids about it oh, come on dad you don't know what cosplay yeah. <laughs> is and it's like i'm the minority now so um if you haven't heard of cosplay we're going to hear a lot about it and uh, Corey, uh, go ahead because uh, um you know it's fascinating yeah I, I, look i'm really grateful that aileen and her sisters agreed to come on the show because so we're very lucky to have guests or who are younger than us clearly who can help us out so we have on the line the Estrada sisters who are cosplayers from Montreal they've been making their own costumes wigs props etc since 2010 they travel nationally as well as internationally as guests at conventions and events have their own YouTube channel for cosplay and are actively content creators on social media platforms such as Instagram and TikTok. Ladies, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Got that in unison. So we have Carmen, Samantha, and, and Aileen on the line, and we're really excited to, to chat with you. So I guess I'm going to start with this one. For us old folks that had no idea, can you explain what cosplay is? Yeah, for sure. So cosplay is basically dressing up as your favorite characters from series that you love, movies, comics, games, whatever you choose. Um, you can either make your costume or buy your costume. We prefer to make our own costumes. Um, we love it because it basically encompasses a bunch of different skills that we all have. Like we, we're artists, so we love to do prop making, sewing, wig making and uh, it's gotten really big over the past like we would say 10 years Mm -hmm. yeah so if you want to be like a superhero or if you want to make a you know a 10 foot robot (laughs) you can basically you're only limited by your imagination yeah and imagination and creativity are all part of it it is quite interesting and i'm intrigued how did you even get started in this field yeah well, we always loved Halloween when we were kids. We've, we've always had a huge Halloween party at our house, and uh, we just love dressing up. Um, so we basically, we found out about the first, like, Montreal Comic Con in 2010, and that's when we first got a feel for the scene and everything. So we really loved the community, and from there it just took off. We were obsessed with dressing up and getting to basically do it all year round instead of just around Halloween. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from there, it's we so, for our social media accounts. And, uh, it, it's so interesting to me that you do this because mm-hmm. um, it's it's more than the dress up, though. My understanding is that you act in character and you're often experts at the subject matter of the characters. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you're passionate about something, you really get into it. Like, if you love a character and you love dressing up as them, you also like acting as that character and you can make videos you can um you know make things with your friends and yeah make videos yeah and, and while you're making the costume you're basically doing so much research on it so it, you really get involved in the character and the series and everything that you're you're creating so it, it's very uh yeah it's very in-depth 
Mm-hmm. We're talking with the Estrada sisters, Aileen, Carmen, and Samantha about cosplay and, and how dressing up in costumes for events. And, and you have not just gained national recognition, but international recognition. Good for you guys. And, it <laughs> you know, you. you must constantly be trying to create things. And, and, and uh, I'm interested in how do you find your inspiration? What inspires you? Yeah, so I think it's basically just like our favorite shows, movies. We do a lot of older st- stuff, too. Like movies from the '80s. Um, so Corey, older stuff. Uh, movies oh, from yeah. the '80s. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, I also do like. Uh, this is Aileen talking, by the way. I do. A, yeah. I, I dream of Jeannie. So that's like super mm-hmm. retro. <laughs> it, you're going to laugh because I was going to, you know, Harry Potter, of course, and all of them. And, yeah. and so the two characters that I was going to ask you about that maybe you're not even heard of it. One of them was I Dream of Jeannie. And, and I'd love for you to also do Archie Bunker. How about that one? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> for some people, they may listening. The younger ones might not even know an Archie Bunker, but I get that in for for us, uh, Corey. You know, <laughs> um, but you know, the, it, it's amazing. And you talk about inspiration. And it's nice to hear. Look, you saw a movie or or a character, and you sort of transform in, into one of these characters. Exactly, and I think a lot of it is when we're inspired by the way that the character looks to like their costume. We just feel like we would be able to recreate it. And yeah, fun. or what we're currently watching or something like that. What, mm-hmm. what we're really uh, inspired by at the moment. Yeah, like we'll be watching, let's say, the new Loki TV show. TV show. So Sam and I are working on cosplays from that. So it's also like what's current and what we're enjoying at the moment. It's fun okay. to find your special niche when you're in cosplay. Mm-hmm. People that Fair know. enough. I have a question, though. I want to know who gets to decide who wears what. <laughs> <laughs> we get asked that a lot actually it's it basically we we judge it by um like if we're doing a group cosplay. yeah if we're doing a group cosplay it's always like who we all think would we would each suit generally we all know like our which type of cosplays we like to do and we know already who we would kind of want to cosplay but there are some times where we would fight over a certain character or something like that yeah uh, interesting, yeah. The, the the sister and sibling uh, squabbles over which character. That's Aileen, Carmen, and Samantha Estrada. Um, and you're doing a good job. Unfortunately, we can't have anyone in studio, so we're hearing voices. <laughs> and, um, you all sound alike, but you're doing a good job yeah, yeah, in, do, interchanging. Good stuff. <laughs> Real quick before we before we head out to traffic, I, I know there those that have heard of cosplay. There are some misconceptions out there. Can you tell us some of them? I think people underestimate like a lot the amount of work that goes into it and uh, they might not take it seriously because they think like it's just a Halloween costume yeah. yeah but there's actually so much work that's involved um, like when you make props for example like it, it takes up a lot of time a lot of energy um, so I think people just really tend to underestimate it for mm-hmm. that reason. They they tend to think it's something that's like just for kids or something. But basically when you're a cosplayer and you're creating your craft and you're doing everything by hand, you're trying to figure out like how to make things work mm-hmm. um, basically by seeing it on screen. I mean, they have huge teams, but we're just one person. So we, we often have to almost be like a costume engineer and figure out how to um, put things together on a physical level if it's like a cartoon or something like that. So there's a lot that goes into it. I yeah. think it's fair what you're saying. Absolutely. And I, uh, you, we did put on our Life Unrehearsed Facebook page and I would encourage other people to check out some of your costumes and we're going to talk about them after we have a quick traffic update uh, update but just uh when we come back i also want to know what you would suggest as a tip to people who hear this say i want to do it what how how they should start off but first mm-hmm. we're going to go here mark shalhoub at the cjad traffic center life unrehearsed brought to you by floor lee senior residences always there for you safe reassuring welcome back you're listening to life on rehearse i'm Corey stroder along with uh, matt del vecchio and we are talking with aileen carmen and samantha estrada aka the estrada sisters they're internationally acclaimed cosplayers so ladies somebody hears this and says I love this. I want to do this. Now that I understand what it is, of course, I want to do it. What's the tip? What's some suggestion you'd give an emerging cosplayer? Um, We would say start small and just build up your repertoire from there. So also don't ever think 
you can't do something because it will honestly shock you what you can accomplish when you set your mind to it. Um, we would also say, like, don't ever limit yourself. Do a lot of research on your character, the costume, the techniques, and different fabrics. And don't be afraid to try a new, ch- a new technique because trial and error are basically your best friend when it comes to cosplay. Yeah, it makes sense. And I like that. You know, just uh, no barriers. Go for it. And uh, some will work. Some may not work. And you move on. (laughs) But go for it. You know, that's uh, I know uh, my stepdaughter uh, was very interested in that and and went to a couple of comic cons. And uh, you know Mm -hmm. what? It's a little bit of trial and error and have some fun while you're you're doing that. You know, uh, so we have to hear, Corey and I are really interested (laughs) in some of the favorite characters that you do cosplay. Yes. Uh, my favorite would have to be Yennefer from uh, the Netflix show The Witcher, um, and also Ron, um, Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. He's just—he's the best character. He's just silly and fun, and I could really let loose on that character. <laughs> so that was Sam. <laughs> okay. Uh, me for for me, Carm. Uh, I would say Jack Sparrow um, because I I love the transformation. I love all the makeup that I, I get to put on. I, I become like a basically a totally different person um, with the wig and the facial hair and everything. And he's just so mm. fun to embody, you know, just get, you get to be a pirate all day. Mm. And uh, probably also uh, Wanda from WandaVision, the new uh, Marvel show. She, well, she's been in the Avengers as well, but I'm having a lot of fun with all her different costumes. She has so many in that show. Mm-hmm. Me for Aileen. I really love doing Harley Quinn. Um, she, I just don't like, I feel like I don't have any restrictions when I'm her and I could be whatever I want to be. I could be wild and crazy and chaotic and like mm-hmm. it's completely opposite to who I am like as a person. So, and I also love being my princesses. I do like Rapunzel mm-hmm. and Belle because I love uh, bringing smiles to kids faces and doing events and stuff like that. It's so, I mean, the energy, the enthusiasm is so fantastic. It's infectious, actually. And I think it's probably has a lot to do with, I mean, obviously you're very talented to be able to, I get uh, to our listeners, you got to check out the photos. You will not believe (laughs) what you will see because I was in awe when I saw what it is. Like you said, it's a lot more complicated than one might think. Mm -hmm. So what would be, in fact, some of the more difficult characters to replicate or to cosplay? Uh, uh, For me, uh, Sam, it would be (laughs) probably Hector uh, from the the, uh, Pixar movie Coco. Um, just because it's very heavily involved with the makeup. He's a skeleton, so I have to mm-hmm. do a lot of um, makeup work on him. Yeah. Uh, for me, Carm, I would say I do a lot of foam armor, and for that, it, it's hard because of all the mobility issues. Like, when you're wearing foam, um, you, you can't really move your torso a lot, and, and it sweats a lot because you can't your body can't breathe through that. So it's, it's a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and also when I cosplay Edward Scissorhands, I'm dressed from head to toe in basically leather. And uh, mm-hmm. I can't uh, use my hands because they're covered in the, the scissor hands. So mm-hmm. it's a bit difficult to wear, definitely. Yeah. For me, Aileen, I would probably say Harley Quinn again, um, just because she has so many tattoos and I really like to go for accuracy. So I'm always trying to like place the tattoos exactly how she has them. And also she has a lot of jewelry too. So I always have to remember like which earring goes on which ear and just crazy stuff like that. A lot of details. Yeah. <laughs> the details is right. Just listening to you, I can imagine, like, could you imagine walking around with Edward Scissorhands? And, and <laughs> it, it, this cannot be easy. Uh, wow. Uh, some uh, some uh, mobility challenges, I'm sure. You know, I, I'm very interested. We're talking, by the way, with the Estrada sisters, uh, Carmen and Samantha and Aileen, uh, doing cosplay. And if you don't know what cosplay is, it's dressing in costumes. You do a lot of convention. I guess that's where um, you wear a lot of your costumes. How do you decide where you go and what you wear? Yeah, I think it's like whatever's current, honestly, like whatever we're inspired by at the moment. And if we decide to do a group cosplay, like all three of us cosplay from the same um, series or movie or show, um, we'll kind of organize it uh, based on which day we want to do it. So sometimes conventions are two to three days long and we like Mm -hmm. to dress up for each one of those days so we always have it like organized ahead of time like what cosplay we're gonna do yeah so saturday will usually be our most involved cosplay our most elaborate and then uh, the sunday will be like a a comfier winding down cosplay (laughs) super brighter 
That's interesting to me that even at a conference, you would be changing costumes each day. It's not even like, you've, okay, this is the character I'm doing for this conference. You, what I'm learning yeah. now is that you change each day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I got to ask, I got to ask, I got to ask. I'm a parent. What are your three daughters doing this? What's the, what are your parents' reactions to this? What are some of the stuff that they say and <laughs> oh, support they you? Oh, they're proud of us, yeah. <laughs> They've been used to us being like such creative kids since we were young and we're very enthusiastic about it. So they, they love that we're doing what we love and that we're happy doing it. Yeah, and also they don't ask questions when we come down the stairs wearing full facial hair, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I have to ask, you know, I've got my little entrepreneur hat on now. I mean, are you doing this just for the passion of it? Or is there any revenue that you're generating? Are you hired by people? How does this work? Um, no, it's definitely just for the passion that we have for it. Uh, we don't really make any money off of it at all, but uh, we do have our YouTube channel and everything. So we like to promote ourselves there and uh, on our social media. But we don't have any revenue currently. Sure, yeah, no. and, and I would probably get my wrist slapped by cosplayers saying, what? This isn't about money. This is about <laughs> enjoying it. <laughs> well, it's good. Crazy, you know, crazy hobby. Uh, well, good for you guys. Really, congratulations. And uh, we want to thank all three of you for coming on here on, on Life on Rehearsal. And we wish you uh, have lots of fun uh, uh, in the upcoming year. Thank you so oh, much. You it was so our pleasure. having us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all so right. fun. Thank you. Thank you. That's Aileen, Carmen, and Samantha Estrada. If you want to check them out, they have a great great Facebook page, YouTube channel. Check out Estrada Sisters and you can see their amazing costumes. All right, Corey, what do you have coming up next week? Next week, we are bringing out the inner artists in everybody. We're going to talk to two fascinating guests. First, we have the co-founder of MU, which is an organization that beautifies the city of Montreal by creating murals that are anchored in local communities, including the famous Leonard Cohen mural downtown and Meet Lynn LaMarche. She's a storyboard artist whose talent is creating the magic of illustrating what the audience is saying. Yeah, Lynn is amazing. She is there in in business uh, meetings and uh, mm -hmm. making things what's said visual. Storyboard artist, uh, quite interesting. Well, thank you very much for tuning into Life Unrehearsed. And as a reminder, for all your inquiries or assistance with retirement homes, seniors, residences, or downsizing, it'd be my pleasure to help. Our services are completely free. Call me at Leannis Senior Transition Support at 514-622-8074 or LeannisServices.com. Many thanks to our technical producer, Jimmy G, and you can listen to Life Unrehearsed here on CJD 800 every Saturday at 3 p.m.